Ted and Myra, let us turn to the official of Second Corinthians. Uh, begin with uh, the fourth chapter, beginning with the very first verse. So you got that, say amen. So second Corinthians, fourth chapter, beginning with the very first verse. Amen. Amen. Found these words according to you. You the word of the Lord. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Yes. Even and even if our gospel is veiled, it is well to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, mm -hmm. so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, mm -hmm. who is in the image of God. Yeah. For what we perish is not ourselves, mm -hmm. but Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servant, for Jesus sake. Yeah. But God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. make his light shine in our hearts to give us light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Mm -hmm. And just for a brief moment, yeah. I want to meditate on the, on the topic of darkness is power. Yeah. Darkness is power. That's my best word of prayer. Our Father, God in heaven, Lord, I thank you for this day and this great opportunity. Right now, I ask that you allow me to decrease so that you may increase your entire behind your cross. Now I ask them in the words of my mouth and the meditations in my heart. Yes. They accept what in your sight be the fruit of my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 That darkness is out. If you have ever seen a scary movie or tried to scare someone, you would know that it is always more effective in the dark. Uh -huh. The reason why it's more, it's more effective in the dark is because darkness is uncertain. Mm -hmm. You're not sure if that shadowy figure is an unknown person or just a coat rat. Right? You're not sure if the creaking that you're hearing is someone sneaking up on you or just a settling of the house. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what it is, whether it takes whether it's taking out the trash, coming to your car, or taking a walk. It's something about the dark that arouses your senses. All right. uh -huh. Something that makes you want to be aware of the darkness is power. Well, boy, this reminds me of a story that, 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 that I tell often. Uh, about when my wife and I was sleeping one night in my, in my old house. <laughs> and I was sound asleep uh, in our room and my youngest son, Jalen, oldest son, excuse me, Jalen, who was about four at the time, was asleep in his room. Around 3 a.m. in the morning, my wife, uh, Sister Sam, was awakening me with a, in a frightened state that I had never seen before. <laughs> Once I awakened, she, she said, look, look, and, 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 and she was pointing towards the, 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 the foot of the bed. And then me being half asleep, looked, and, and I became frightened as well. <laughs> it was a shadow at the foot of my bed. All I saw was a dead head. Maybe it was an alien. <laughs> Who knows what it could have been? So I immediately turned on the lamp that was right beside my bed. And when the light was turned on, 
I'll never forget a, 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 a gentleman was sitting there wide awake, watching us sleep. And I said, boy, what are you doing in here? He said, there's a bug in my bed. <laughs> if it was daytime, we would have never been afraid. Uh -huh. But the darkness changes the simplest thing until the scariest oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, maybe you ever been in a haunted house. Mm -hmm. In a haunted house, they're normally they're only open when it's dark. Um, that's right. And the lights are dim. And as you walk, things begin to jump out at you. All, right. uh, All as a purpose of scaring you. But if you ever had an opportunity to, to work in one or walk by in the day, the things are near and scary. All right. Why? Because whenever you can see things, All right. it casts a better picture. For yeah. well, even though it may look a certain way, mm -hmm. you can tell by the light that it's fake. All right. Yeah. You can tell by the light that it's just a little makeup. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can tell by the light that that that, 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 that it's really nothing to be afraid of at all. All yeah. right. But it's something about when it's dark. Come on. Yeah. Yes, sir. You see the, the, the power of the dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or I can I can remember now uh, 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 little men would, 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 would never sleep with all the lights off. Or uh, whenever he go to sleep, if we turn the light off, by the time we get back up, the light's back on. Mm. And, 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 and it's something about having the light on. For when it's nap time, when the day no light is needed. All right. But it's just whenever it's dark. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oftentimes he will call and say, Daddy, uh, the TV scared me. I said, the TV is off. He said, yeah, but I can see a shadow. All right. All right. There's something about the dark. Oh, yeah. You know, this leads us to our foundation scripture where Paul is in the middle of a letter to the church in Corinth, mm -hmm. where the believers had been infiltrated by false prophets who had caused them to doubt Paul and his teachings. Mm -hmm. Verse 1 declares, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry. If we look at this verse, there are two key words that stand out to me like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. And that is this ministry. In order to understand the scripture that follows this scripture, we must understand what this ministry is. Uh -huh. If we were to study chapter 3, we understand that Paul defines this ministry as the New Testament ministry of Christ Jesus. Paul's description of this ministry can be broken down into five distinct areas. The first is a ministry of the Spirit. Okay. The Old Testament ministry consisted of a law which was written in stone, mm -hmm. which are the Ten Commandments. But the New Testament law is written by the Spirit in the hearts of the believers. Uh -huh. The Spirit writes the same law inwardly, which now provides God's law, which previously he had hated, mm -hmm. and the power to keep it, which previously did not possess. Secondly, a ministry of life. The New Testament ministry is a ministry of life because of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins, which now give us the opportunity to receive eternal life, yeah. which with the old covenant we did not possess. Uh -huh. Thirdly, a ministry of righteousness. The ministry of, of Christ Jesus brings righteousness through the saving grace of his blood. Oh, yeah. The scripture tells us that even though our sins we wear as crimson, uh -huh. his blood washes them whiter than snow. Oh, yes. Fourthly, a more glorious ministry. The Old Testament ministry was glorious, it was glorious that Moses brought from, the, from off of Mount Sinai. But the ministry, but that ministry led to death. Yeah. The New Testament ministry given by the Spirit leads to life 
would mix it glorious. And fearfully a ministry of liberty. The Spirit gives us freedom from sin, uh -huh. death, and condemnation Thank of the law. I remember Kirk Franklin wrote a song uh, uh, back in the day that says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. All right. yes. Now that we have an understanding of this ministry, we will now be able to understand the rest of the text. Now, verse 1 reads, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Mm -hmm. You see, for the thing we need to understand is that the dark has no influence of those in the light. Amen. Amen. The darkness has no influence over those who live in the light. Uh -huh. When we see this word lose heart, it means to become weary, yeah. to be tired, to be or to be despaired. Oftentimes, we find ourselves surrounded by darkness, and the only light present is the light that comes from within us. Mm -hmm. our, our mind begin to wonder, so we need to realize is that no matter how difficult our task may be, or how great the opposition, those of us who reside in the light will not retreat in silence, but speak boldly, because we are motivated by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. What we need to understand is, 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 is the gospel tells us that we are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. and the gospel tells us that, 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 that if you have a candle or a lamp, you don't put it under a bowl. Oh, yeah. meaning, mm -hmm. meaning that even though there's dark, our responsibility <laughs> is to bring light oh, yeah. in the midst of the darkness. Oh, yeah. Our responsibility is to show up when there's no light. Oh, yeah. Somebody knows what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. It is our responsibility to no matter how dark a situation oh, yeah. may yeah. seem, to shine our light so that there can be light yeah. for everyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For this ministry gives us power to stand against the false oh, yeah. teachers. Not only stand against, but be able to appeal to the conscience of all with integrity because of how we carry ourselves, wow. renouncing secrets and shameful ways, living a life that is proven to not be users of deception or destroyers of God's word. Oh, yeah. Rather, instead, be set forth that the word of God plainly which is stated in verse 2. So how do we know if we are living in the light or walking in the dark? How do we know if we are hiding our light or we shining it there for How do we know if we are showing fear or we are showing boldness? How do we know if our lives is a life, that are, is a life of light or a life of darkness? How do we know where do we preside? Yeah. Well, if you know you stand for corruption instead of integrity, then you preside in the dark. If you know that you, that if you, if you are known to be an instigator instead of a peacemaker, then you might preside in the dark. If you have a Sunday morning mouth. And a Sunday afternoon to Saturday night mouth. <laughs> then you reside in the dark. Yeah. If you were known as a comedian, mm -hmm. well, always blending into whatever your surroundings is, whether it's the club or whether it's drinking at the bar or whether it's running the aisle. You see, because one thing we need to understand, just because we put on a show on a Sunday morning, don't make us live in the light. What we need to understand is that it is our action that depict who we are. You see, because the people who can tell exactly who you are are the people you don't talk to, but you do. You see, you see, somebody missed that. Your co-workers, uh -huh. who you don't talk to. Yeah. Right. Your co-workers who watch you from a distance. Oh, yeah. Those are the ones who can really tell you exactly who you are. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Because they watch you when nobody else. Yeah. They listen to you when you don't think anybody oh, yeah. paying attention yeah. to you. Uh -huh. See, for in today's society, we have so many people who have a chameleon personality. Mm. 
If we look at old Tiger Woods, portrayed as a devout family man, he was really a woman. Right. If we look at the former uh, 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 representative from uh, the former governor from New York, Elliot Smith, mm -hmm. who was the leader of the entire state uh, 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 and ended up being a user of prostitutes. Mm -hmm. you, you see, because it's not all about what we say, okay. right? mm -hmm. but it's about what we do. Yeah. 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 We can call ourselves a Christian and we can call ourselves devoted to the things of God, but we need to ask ourselves, what do our actions show? Does my action show I love the Lord, or does my action show I love the Lord when it's convenient? What do your actions show? Because if your actions show a religion of convenience, then you're living in the dark. That there are consequences to living in the dark. You see, some people think because you don't see it, there are no consequences. <laughs> Some people believe that because you don't know about it, that there are no consequences. Some people believe that because I talk about you behind your back and smile in your face, there are no consequences. Some people believe that, that, that because I can smile in your face on Monday, but keep rumors going on Tuesday, then there are no consequences. So we continue, let's see what the consequences of living in the dark are. Verse 3 through 4 says, and even if our gospel is well, uh -huh. even if there's something in front of it, it is well to those who are perishing. Mm -hmm. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. So, what is this saying? This is saying, this is saying that the gospel is hidden to those who live in the dark. Yeah. That the gospel is hidden to those who live in the dark. Uh -huh. Unbelievers have a barrier to overcome. The God of this age has blinded their mind because of Satan's deception. What the word thinks is obviously true and is painfully wrong. Whenever you follow Satan's deception, you have reflectively made him your God. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. That's right. No matter what you tell yourself who your God is, mm. your actions given on account of something oh, different. You see, Satan doesn't mind you saying that you're a child of God, but living for him. Satan don't mind you singing on the choir. Right. Satan don't mind you serving on the board. Right. Satan don't mind you sitting in the same spot every Sunday morning. As long as you are living for him. Yes, the problem is we believe that showing up on Sunday morning dressed to a key. As they say, sharp as a tack. Looking all pretty makes makes up for the dirtiness that's on the inside. But what I come to tell you today, it doesn't matter how you show up and what you show to people. What matters is how you live and what's on the inside. What I come to tell you today is it is the gospel. For those who sometimes misunderstand, is hidden to those who live Jesus. in the dark. Yes. Well, yes, it is. So, as we continue in the text, yes. this makes it seem that for those who are sinners, there is no hope. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. This makes it seem for those who are trapped in the dark, there's no way for them to make it to the light. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But I have, I have good news for you this afternoon. For what we need to understand is that the only Christ can turn on the light in our hearts of those who live in the dark. Only Christ can turn the light on in the hearts of those who live in the dark. Well, no matter how hard we try, no matter how much effort we personally put forward to make ourselves better, there's nothing we can do to make ourselves better. Come on, 
The only way we can go from dark to light is have Christ come in oh, yeah. and change us yeah. from the inside out. Uh -huh. yeah. That's why uh, the song says you must serve my Jesus from the inside out. All right. yes, sir. Sir. All right. That's why I love the old song back in the day growing up, especially at the revival. Somebody would always get up and say, there's something. Yes, but on the in, on the out inside, and it's moving on the outside. I, I come to tell you today, church, it, 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 uh, uh, it, the only way you can make it to where God wants us to be is there got to be something on the inside that's moving on the outside. Uh, uh, somebody knows what I'm talking about. For right now, the darkness has power over so many of us. Uh -huh. Because we live there and we allow darkness to control our lives. And the thing about darkness is, is, is darkness is that little dirty secret. Yeah. And, and, and when one person learns about that dirty secret, it, it, it grabs the hold of you. Uh -huh. And it begins to strangle you. Yeah. Because darkness has a way yes. of, of, of keeping us from going to the altar. Darkness hands away from keeping us from making it to Christ. Why? Because we begin to think about now someone knows that the pretty dress and the pretty smile and the sharp suit don't mean anything. Somebody now knows that even though I look like everything is all right, that I'm tearing up on the inside. Even though things are looking good right now, I'm really are in a mess. But what I come to tell you today is that, that if you allow Jesus to come inside your heart, everything will be all right. I come to tell you today that the, the darkness doesn't have to stay. Because even if you look at the world that we live in, there are times in the year where there's more darkness than there is light. There are times in the year where it seems as though it's dark longer than it's light. But what I come to tell you today, that if you just keep on living throughout that year, you're going to get to the point where there's more light than there is darkness. What I'm trying to tell you today, no matter how long or thick your darkness is, if you just hold on to God's hand and believe in His Word that everything is going to be alright, then you need to see that your light will eventually show up. I come to tell you today, just the same way last Sunday Peter was walking on the water in the midst of his storm, in the midst of his trial, in the midst of his situation, and Jesus was there. The storm didn't stop, or his darkness was still there. But he realized that even when your storm gets rough, and you begin to doubt if you're going to make it out, you call on the name of Jesus and realize when we call on Jesus and everything is going to be alright. That's what I come to tell you today. The only time darkness has power if you don't have the light of the Spirit living on the inside. So what I come to tell you today is that you need to have Christ on the inside, yes. casting your light out to get rid of the darkness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. But I come to tell you yes. today, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Not just yes. power, no darkness. Yes. And the only power that darkness has is the power that you allow it to oh, yes. have. Amen. And that's the good news. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. For if you don't allow darkness to have power in your life, it can't have it. That's right. Just the same way that four years old, little man knows, he knows how to defeat the dark. He knows how to turn that light on. Yeah. And when he turns the light on, everything is then all right. Yes, sir. 
when I come to tell you today, is some of you that you really need to turn on the lights. What I need to tell, tell you today is some of you right now are living in darkness and are, and are, and are trembling yeah. as though you are by yourself. Yes. But God is there waiting for you to call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's waiting for you to call his name yeah. so that he can come and rescue you. So he can come and turn on the light in the darkness in your life. Yeah. But if you don't call, he can't come. It's the same way that if you're at your house mm -hmm. and the power goes out. And you look at everybody else's house that has power, but yours don't. If you never call the power come, you can never get your life turned back. If you never make an effort to contact the one who possessed the power, yes, then there's no way you can receive the power. And the problem is, some of us live every day complaining that we don't have power. And never call the power company. Some of us live every day complaining about what we don't have, and we never call the one who has. Amen. But what I want to tell you today is that you can come out of the dark. All right. And live in the light. Thank you, Lord. Let us stand. For there may be one who is tired of stumbling in the dark. Who is tired of trembling every time they hear a priest. Who's tired of not seeing the, the stumbling block that's in your way. But what I come to tell you today, that if you just allow yeah. the light to be turned off. Yes. I'm not saying there won't be stumbling blocks, but you got somebody that can share the light with oh, yes. stumbling block and be able to carry it through. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm not saying because there's light that you won't see the valley that's coming because you will. The, the difference is you have a light God in you. Hey, yes, sir. Thank you. So as the choir sings, your opportunity is now. Will you come? Walking in the light, beautiful light, from where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Now is your opportunity. Shine. 